Hi there, I want to welcome you to Topics in Open Source Development. This is DPS 909 or OSD 600, depending on uh, which course code you're taking it under. It's cross-listed uh, under both, both codes. So I wanted to introduce myself. I want to introduce this course, but first I want to, I want to welcome you. I'm really excited that you're taking the course. This is this is my favorite course to teach. I'll, I, you're not supposed to have favorites, but I absolutely love this course and it's a, a real passion of mine. And it's mainly because open source is such a passion of mine. So first of all, who am I? I'm David Humphrey uh, on the internet. I'm HumphD. So on GitHub or Twitter or any of the places you're looking for me, that's where you'll find me. And I work on open source. I teach and research and work on all sorts of open source things. So. A lot of my work has been related to the open web. So working on web standards and web technologies, especially on browsers. So I spent a lot of years working with Mozilla, working on Firefox, working on um, all different um, JavaScript related web, web technologies. So these days I'm really focused on the web, on Node.js, on browsers, and those are my particular uh, areas of interest. But I love all open source. I love working with Git and GitHub, and I'm, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what open source is, what this course is. So one of the first things we should talk about, you know, this is a course on topics in open source development, and you've signed up for a course on open source. I'd actually be really interested if we were uh, together right now, I would wanna hear from you what you think open source is. Uh, and I think that over the course of the term, our understanding of what open source is, is going to evolve. You're going to get involved in open source and that's going to influence you and how you think about it. So if I was going to try and define open source for you, which I'm not going to go into great detail today, uh, but I would say that open source is a number of things. So open source is partly about building software that other people can freely use, modify and share. So we could say that open source is about licensing. And we're gonna talk in this course about how do you license software so that people have certain rights that there are things they're allowed to do with it. Open source in this regard is a reaction to proprietary software, to closed source software. We could also say that open source is about community and it's about the ability to leverage the network effects of the internet. What happens when you make uh, when you make projects that anyone in the world can work on. And so we see all kinds of success stories as a result of this. Open source is also about the opportunity to learn and grow, especially as a junior developer. So you're just getting started in your programming career. And I think that one of the most amazing aspects of open source is that you get to go and work alongside senior developers who have more experience and you get to see how they do what they do. Uh, up until this point, you've been doing projects where your professor gives you an assignment, you work on the assignment, everybody's doing the same thing, and that's it. Well, we're going to do something really, really different, and we're going to get involved directly in working on open source projects, and that's going to give you a different set of perspectives. Open source is also about freedom to create things without needing permission. And so we're going to get involved in the open source community and in open source projects, and we don't have to go and ask anybody if we're allowed to do it. We're just going to do it. So what is this course? Uh, as I said, you're taking this course probably under one of the two course codes, DPS 909 in the BSD or OSD 600 in CPA. And so the course is Topics in Open Source Development. And why do we do it? So we started the course in 2004. And it was something we built in reaction to research work that we were doing at the time. So we were working on research projects and one of them had us get involved really deeply with Mozilla. And Mozilla has a large office in Toronto. And as we started to work with them, it became clear that the skills that our students had and the kinds of work that we do at Seneca could, could really be beneficial to Mozilla. They had lots of software projects that needed people to get involved. They were looking for contributors and we had lots of students and faculty who were interested in becoming involved. So as we did this work, we learned more and more about how open source works, how Mozilla um, works on software. And we said, you know, 
we really should turn this into a course. We should make this something that our, all of our students can have access to. We didn't want to limit it just to the people who are working on research projects. So we developed this course and some other courses, and um, the goal is to, is to give Seneca students real-world software development experience. Uh, and, th and the key thing here is being able to do it while you're still a student. So obviously there are co-ops and many of you have either done co-op placements or you're going to be doing co-op placements. There's internships and so on. But how do you gain experience as a software developer if you can't get accepted into a particular company or um, things don't work out? Like right now we're in an interesting time with COVID. People are, are stuck at home. How do you gain software experience? So this is a course uh, where we do a deep dive, we do an immersion style, and we get people involved in real world programming. So this is a project course. So right at the beginning, I wanna say a couple of things about what this course is and what it isn't. So in my experience, not every student thrives in this environment. So there's no textbook for this, co for this course, all there is is the web. There's no set of common assignments. Every single student in this course is gonna do something different over the, over the term. I've had some students email me and say, what language do we have to use? And my answer to that is you can use any language you want. You could program everything in this course in Java and or you could do everything in Rust or in Go or in C++ or something else. So this isn't a course about a particular technology. It's a course about working on large open source projects that already exist. It's about contributing into something that already exists, learning the skills that you need in order to be able to do this. There's no clear path on how to do this. So every time I teach this course, I do it differently. Every student who takes this has a different experience because they all get involved in different projects and different kinds of work. So your experience will be different than other students' experiences in this course and also in previous iterations of the course. So you're gonna go where the coding takes you. And also nothing happens in this course if you don't do it. So this isn't a course where you read the chapter, you do the quiz, there's an assignment, there's an exam and you pass and you're done. It's not like that. This is a course about you getting involved in doing real things. So in my experience, a lot of students love this. They love the freedom they love the ability to try new things out. They love pushing themselves. They love experimenting. And in my experience, some students don't enjoy it. They don't enjoy the ambiguity. They don't enjoy that it isn't clear what you're supposed to do. They don't enjoy not knowing where to turn or how to cope. So I would encourage you to think about, you know, as you as you think about this course, is this, is this the right course for you? I hope that it is. And I know that um, you can have a great experience if you're willing to step outside your comfort zone. So what I'm gonna do with you is I'm going to guide and mentor you through the process of getting involved in open source projects. And that's gonna mean a number of things. So one of the things that we're gonna do and I'm gonna spend a lot of time on is Git and GitHub. I want you, when you leave this course, to be a really, really good Git user. So you may have some Git experience from other courses. Maybe your professors have given you a few commands and they've said, type these commands and you've typed them in and sometimes they've worked and sometimes you had to delete your repository and start again and you didn't really understand what was going on. I want you to become really, really comfortable with Git and working with Git and GitHub because this is the primary way that open source is done today. So if you understand how to work with these tools, you're gonna be able to get involved and work on very big projects. We're gonna learn a lot about how to use Git and GitHub for all sorts of open source workflows. So when you put hundreds of people onto a multi-million line software project, there are certain ways that work best for doing this. There's best practices, there's tools, there's processes for automation. So learning how to do software in the large, work, learning how to work on, I guess even small software projects, but learning how to cope in an open source environment is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time teaching you skills. I'm gonna show you how tools work and I'm gonna do a lot of case studies. So I'll take you through and I'm gonna fix lots of bugs and I'm gonna show you how this works and I'm gonna talk you through the process. And most importantly, I'm gonna work with you to make this happen. 
Now, a big thing that's going to come up and a term that I'm going to use today, maybe you've heard it before, is this idea of imposter syndrome. And if you haven't heard about this idea before, it's, it's feeling like other people know more than you do, that you really shouldn't be there, that you don't belong, that you're not good enough. And I want to challenge all of those ideas in you. So I am going to ask you in this course to do things that are hard. I'm going to ask you to work on code that's more complicated than anything you've worked on before. I'm going to ask you to work with tools and programming languages and environments that you haven't seen before, and it's going to be overwhelming. And even worse, I'm going to ask for you to do that in the open. So when I talk about doing work in the open, what I mean is I'm going to ask you to blog about it. I'm going to ask you to submit your code to open source projects, and you're going to have people reviewing your code and telling you this is wrong, this is wrong, or you're going to not know where to begin, and you're going to have to ask questions of people in the course, but also people on the internet. It doesn't feel great when you feel like you don't know what you're doing. And this diagram here, imposter syndrome is really, you know, this is what I think I know, and everybody else seems to know so much more than me. Everybody else in this course seems to know everything already about Git, and I'm the only one who doesn't know Git. Well, that's actually not true. I can tell you I've taught, <laughs> I've taught this course to over a thousand students, and um, everybody struggles with this stuff. So you're not alone. So you're not going to feel comfortable at first doing what I ask you to do, and that's okay. So I want you um, to understand that it's going to suck when you feel like you don't know what you're doing, you don't know something. It's not going to feel great when you know you have to expose yourself in front of other people and say, I don't, I don't know how this command works, or I don't know what to do with this programming language or something like that. However, I want you to, I want you to push through this phase. I, I want you to know, first of all, that you aren't alone that we will help you. So part of what we're going to do in this course is we're going to create a community, a community of support. So you can ask anything in this class. If you need help with something in C++ or you need help with something in Git, or you're not sure how to understand a piece of code, you can come and you can talk to people. So we're going to use Slack as our main, our primary communication channel, and it's going to be available 24 seven for you to be able to talk to each other and get help. I want you to know that you can do this. As I said, I've had more than a thousand students go through this and I've seen it happen over and over and over again. People tell me, I don't know how to do this. There's no way I can do this. And by the end, they've done something amazing. So just as an example, last fall, students in this course, they wrote over 85,000 lines of code in 266 different open source projects. And the projects they worked on included projects that are owned by Mozilla, Bitcoin, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, WordPress, NASA, Uber, all kinds of big, big projects. Every one of those students, when they started, would have told you the same thing that you're feeling right now, which is, I don't know how to get started. I don't know how to do this. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm good enough. What if I'm not a good enough programmer, etc. So I want you to understand that open source is all about getting involved, making small contributions to projects, and slowly leveling up. So let's also spend a minute talking about how this course is different than other courses. I have a section here in the, in the wiki about the philosophy of the course. So one of the first things that's different about this course is that you're allowed to help each other. So if you are taking some of my other classes and you get together as a group and you all work on an assignment and you hand it in and it looks pretty similar, I'm going to say to you all, this looks like cheating, and this is going to be a big problem. And probably many of you know people who've had problems like this. Maybe you've been involved in this in the past. So oftentimes in these courses, we're not looking for collaboration. We're looking for you to do something individually. In this course, it's okay to help each other. It's okay to talk with each other because you're not going to be doing the same assignments. Every one of you is going to be working on different bugs, working on different uh, projects. So when one person fixes a bug, the bug no longer exists. I'm not going to assign that same bug to 60 of you. So another thing that's different about this course is that you can share your work with other people. I'm going to ask you to put your work up on GitHub. I'm going to ask you to make it public, which is going to seem weird because what if other students read my work? What if I read other students' work? What if people see what I wrote? Well, that's kind of the point when you're working in open source. So you can read and use code that you find on the web 
if the license allows it. So one of the things we're going to learn is how do I take advantage of existing open source code that's out there? In this course, it doesn't make sense for you to write code that already exists. Open source is about building on top of existing projects. Keep, you know, not reinventing the wheel. We're also going to do a lot of collaboration with people outside of the course. So it's very common for you in this class to be working with people all around the world. So I've had students work with developers in India and in New Zealand and in Brazil and in the US and in the UK and all over the place. So open source is global and you're not just going to work in a group of three students in this course. You're going to work with people who are scattered around the planet and they're working on projects together. So that's going to be quite different. Another difference is it's okay in this course to try and do something hard for it to not work out and still pass. So what I mean by that is I've had situations in the past where students will write a fix for a bug or they'll write code for a feature. And when they start working with the open source project, they'll go back and forth and the project might decide, you know what, we're going to go a different direction. We've decided we're not going to take this code. So you're not going to fail this course if an open source project doesn't accept your code. If you do everything you can do, uh, then that's all you can do. And I'm going to mark you on the process of what you do as opposed to did you, um, did you make it over this bar? So let's talk a little bit about how the grading in the course is going to work. So as I said a moment ago, I'm going to try as much as I can to get rid of the busy work that you would normally have to do in a lot of courses. There's no quizzes, there's no tests, there's no exam. The only thing there is, is working on open source code. So 60% of your grade is going to be four dot releases. Release 0 0.1, release 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. We name the releases this way on purpose. I want you to think about the fact that you are slowly progressing on your journey through open source. A 0 0.1 release is a very early release. It doesn't have all of the features of a 1.0 or a 2.0. So I want you to get into the mindset of release early, release often, which is one of the things we do in open source. You, you want to get your work out there. You want to get feedback on your work, etc. I'll talk about your first release, which is due in a couple of weeks in the next video. But it's already been posted here and you can see the due dates that are up. Um, in the second release, we're going to be working on Hacktoberfest. And if you want to read about Hacktoberfest, it's here. Hacktoberfest is a month long um, community event that people get involved in all around the world to get involved in open source and fix uh, fix bugs in open source projects. So for the month of October, you will be uh, working on Hacktoberfest. And I also will just mention that the students in this course have written a project called Telescope. Telescope is our main um, blog aggregation system. And Telescope is, uh, let's see, still going here. My internet's not working well for this. Is a blog aggregation system. So there are all kinds of opportunities for you to get involved in programming Telescope. And we'll talk about having you get involved and help maintain this project as well as when we, when we go through the term. Um, I'm also going to ask you to do a series of labs. So you're going to have 10 labs. They're each worth 4%. And most of these labs are going to be meant to keep you on track with the work that you're doing in your, um, in your releases. So for example, during October, your labs are going to be every week, you're going to have to have a bug finished because Hacktoberfest involves fixing four bugs. So each week you're going to get one done. Um, you're going to have to write blog posts. You're going to have to try out certain skills, play with certain tools, etc. So the labs are going to be practical examples of you working on skills that you need when you go off and try working on um, different open source projects. I'm also going to expect you to blog every week. So part of working open is talking about your work. I want you to get used to writing about all, all of the, the programming that you're doing, the things that you're learning, etc. And I'll talk more about that in a subsequent video. So 
The goals for the course are, I want you to take what you know about technology and programming. How many programming languages have you learned so far? I mean, you, you know quite a few at this point, right? Have you written any big programs in them? What's the largest program you've ever worked on? 1,000 lines of code, 5,000 lines of code, 10,000 lines of code. I'd like you to have the chance to work on some real world programs. And real world programs are much more complicated than anything that you do in your normal coursework. I don't expect you to write a million lines of code, but I want you to learn how to fix bugs in a program that is a million lines of code. How do you even get started doing that? So that's the kind of thing that I want. I want you to learn to apply your knowledge. I want you to gain real world experience that you can put on your resume. You're gonna be looking to apply for co-op positions. You're going to be looking to apply for jobs. And when you go and you give them your resume, I want you to think what would be cool if it was on your resume? Which projects, if you worked on them, would set you apart from other students or other people that they're uh, thinking about hiring? So a lot of people who go through this course end up with some really interesting experience that they're able to leverage when they go looking, um, looking for jobs. I'd like you to gain some new skills. There are so many things that we don't teach programming languages that we don't teach, tools that we don't teach, techniques that we don't teach. They're just not covered anywhere. Nobody teaches them. You don't learn them until you start working on real code. So I want you to go and I want you to uh, learn, learn some new skills. I also want you to expose yourself to some new techniques, technologies, or areas of programming. If I asked you today, what type of a programmer you want to be? Well, I want to make uh, web apps. I want to make iOS apps. I want to do, you know, maybe you list three or four different things that you can, I want to work on databases. Or I don't want to work on databases. I don't want to work on game engines, whatever. Maybe you know what you do and don't like about the courses you've taken, but I'd love to expand your knowledge of what's out there. Open source is not just about products. It's also about projects. It's about technologies. So you might find that you get really interested in testing or you might get really interested in distributed systems or in um, cryptocurrencies or big data or AI or 2D graphics, 3D graphics, networking. There's so many different areas where you can get involved in some slice of what that project is doing. Things that you don't even know exist today. And so I want you to get a more full understanding of how this industry works, all the, all the ways that you could, you could work on things. I want you to meet new people and get become part of the communities that exist. Open source has it, open source is mostly about people. Um, most technology gets replaced. So if you work long enough on any project, the code gets rewritten and gets thrown out, and a new version comes out. And what stays the same are the are the people that work on it. So I want you to make some relationships and meet people in this course at Seneca, but also you know, around the world. I want you to start networking. I want you to think about how you can grow your network of people you know and people who know you and your work. I want you to start building a record of the kind of work you're capable of. I want you to blog. I want you to put your work on GitHub. If I Google your name, what comes up? Hopefully it's not, you know, stupid Instagram posts or something that you don't want to show your employer. Hopefully it's something that you're proud of. It's work that you've done and you say, you know what? I worked on this project, I'm really proud of it, and I stand behind this work. So thinking about starting to build almost a personal brand or an identity for yourself on the web. Who are you on the web? And if I go looking for you, what do I find? Lastly, and most importantly, I want you to have some fun. Open source is about getting to work on real things. And if you're like me, I'm I'm a software developer. I love programming. I love working on things. I like fixing bugs. I like extending projects. I like taking two things that didn't ever work together and finding a way to connect them. It's fun to work on software and I want to give you that chance as opposed to just giving you projects that are made up imaginary type things that you have to do in a course. This is going to be this is going to be about doing real things. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pause there. I want to do another video and I want to take you on a tour through the first week's materials. I want to talk to you about the first assignment and um, just give you a sense of how to get started. 
Um, but I wanted to begin with this. I wanted to begin and say, welcome. I'm excited you're taking the course. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> so make sure you're up for it. And um, I'm going to give you as much help as I can to get you through the beginnings of this and get you launched into your uh, open source programming career.